What's going on, guys? Blake Morse here, and I am talking with Les Johnson. And Les, you work for NASA, and you write science fiction, and you're here at a video game convention talking about uh, the actual concept of interstellar travel. Yeah, that's right. I have to be real careful. I'm not representing NASA this weekend. I'm actually uh, written and talk extensively about how we might go to the stars someday. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's great. I, I wish it were as easy as the game makes it look. Uh, going to the stars is going to be difficult, but this is an inspiration. It's a lot of fun. Now, how did you how did you get involved uh, with the con convention here? Because it is it is kind of strange to go to a gaming convention and then have like uh, a talk on on actual science on on actual edu educational things. Well, I write science fiction, and I've got a book out called Going Interstellar, which has short stories about going to the stars, realistically how we might actually do it, and kind of science behind the essays. And that prompted the folks at the convention to contact me and ask me to come tell the, the attendees, hey, you know, you're having fun in this game. How we how might we actually do it someday? You got to really think different, though. You got to think really big because the distances are huge. We might go to the stars with ships using fu uh, fusion propulsion, which is what powers the sun. Uh, my favorite is something called a solar sail, which uses reflected sunlight, or in the case of uh, going to the stars, lasers hitting these big lightweight sails uh, and pushing them with, with just light pressure that might take us to the stars. And then there are uh, ships conceived that might use antimatter, which is real. Uh, we don't make much of it, but it's the most energy efficient source we know of. Uh, energy equals mc squared equals mc squared thanks to Einstein. And that's real. It's good. It's out there. And if we get really desperate, we might do something like the old Project Orion, which is where you take something, say, the size of a battleship and start exploding nuclear bombs underneath it. But that would be like kind of a last resort. Now, I know a lot of science fiction movies always go with the cryogenic freezing for long-distance space travel. Is that something that's actually plausible? Well, you know, I'm, I'm a physicist, and I can tell you about the transportation systems to take us to the stars. But if we're talking about 100-year voyages, we've got to figure out what to do with us people. We're really the weak link. Uh, just imagine being in a camper with your three best buds for 500 days going to and from Mars. And I don't even think I could make it five days in a camper with my friends. <laughs> That's the point. So if we're talking about you know, trips beyond two years, which we haven't done yet going to Mars, how can we be thinking about hundreds of years to go to the stars? So I think in addition to the propulsion, which is what my area is, we're going to have to do a lot about what it means to be human. Can we freeze people? Can we genetically alter people so that they're better suited for deep space exploration? I don't know. There's a lot that has to be done. I think, I think I'm down for, for lasers and mutations. That, that all sounds pretty cool to me. I can get into that. Well, I mean, this is supposed to be the century of bioscience. So as we combine what's happened in the past with space travel with what the bio folks are doing, maybe we'll have a breakthrough. Now, what do you think of EVE Online and like everything that they're doing and like how they're presenting themselves and kind of tying themselves into these real life, uh, these real life science endeavors? Well, I'll tell you, as a kid who was inspired by watching Star Trek and, and reading science fiction, I think today's generation of scientists are going to be inspired by playing games like EVE and other online science and science fiction kind of related games. Maybe that'll encourage kids to study math and physics and, and, and come work for, for, you know, different companies and for us trying to explore space. I think it's great. Well, there's definitely enough charts and tables in EVE to get them good at math. Um, Les, thank you so much for talking with us today. If people want to check out your work, where can they go? Well, they can go to my website. It's uh, www.lesjohnsonauthor.com. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, you'd have to search for Les Johnson Author, and I do tweet. And where can we find you at Twitter? Uh, at Les Author. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.